Hey there, my name is Blake. I have a background in fine art, specifically with printmaking. And today, I'm gonna go from start to finish on a small little lino cut project. So, come along. If you've never used linoleum to print before, this will be a perfect introductory video to get you started on a really cool and very versatile medium. Before we jump into the steps of creating a lino cut print, you'll need a few items. You'll need a linoleum block, which comes in different forms and different levels of softness. If this is your first time carving, you may want a linoleum block that's softer and easier to handle. Special carving tools are needed to carve away the surface of the linoleum to create an image. You will also need block printing ink. I prefer water-based ink to help with the cleanup process, but oil-based ink works well too. In order to apply the ink, you will need a rubber brayer to mix and roll the color onto your block. You also need paper to print onto, and if you want it to be really fancy, a baron to apply pressure to the block. The first step in any lino cut project begins with sketching and idea generation. Now this can be accomplished in a few ways, but my favorite is pulling out the old sketchbook and a few color pencils to get the multiple ideas floating around in my head and onto some paper. You're more than welcome to use scrap paper, sketch right onto the block, or even use a digital medium. It's often helpful to start with the medium you're comfortable with, especially if you're new to the rest of the project. When sketching, keep in mind that you'll be limited with your color use, depending on how many layers you carve. LinoCut is all about creating layers of color to form an image. After you've finished sketching, you'll need to choose which image you want to transfer to the block. I create a more precise version of the sketch before I transfer to the block. This helps me define the shapes I need to cut out, and I manually draw the image onto the block. But you could use tracing paper or graphite rubbing. Anything I draw now be reversed when I print it, which is important to keep in mind if you're using text. After the image is transferred, it's time to carve. The carving tool I use has multiple sizes of V-shaped blades. Depending on the area you need to carve out, you'll adjust the size accordingly. Since my block is only a few inches wide, I'll use a smaller, more precise blade. The block I'm using has a layer of linoleum mounted on wood, but that's not always the case. My first step is to remove the area of the image that will be white. Since the paper is white, I don't want any ink to transfer over after I print. As I carve, I make sure to point the blade away from me to avoid any unhappy accidents. And if you do, don't worry, just grab a band-aid and keep on carving. After carving away my first layer, it's time to mix the ink and print. I use a piece of glass as my palette and spread a bead of ink, or just a small squeeze, near the top. By rolling the brayer back and forth, I mix the ink evenly and create a thin layer on the surface of the glass. When rolling, you'll want to do one pass, lift it up, and do another pass to avoid rolling the same area of the brayer over and over. Important tip, when rolling the ink onto the block, make sure not to overload the surface and flood the smaller details. Remember, you can build layers up with a few passes, but it's hard to take away ink if you put too much on too fast. Once there's a thin layer of ink on the surface, Grab your paper and line it up in the center or wherever you want. Place the block and use a baron to apply pressure. If you don't have a baron, you can use your hand like me, a spoon, or even a clean brayer. The important thing is to create an even layer of pressure all over the block. Printmaking is all about trial and error, so this first pass may not turn out perfect. I needed more ink on the block, so I will add more the second time. Rinse and repeat the printing steps until you finish all of your paper. So the first layer is complete. However, I'm going to add a second layer with more details in a darker color. Since the ink covered my original pencil lines, I will need to redraw the image before I can carve again. As you get more details, it's important to go slow and steady. For the next layer, I'm carving away all the areas that I want to stay yellow, so when I apply the ink, the red will show in certain places. Okay, back to printing now. Some Linocop projects have many layers, but mine only has two. 
No matter the amount of details or layers, be conscious of how the color applies to the paper. If you're using transparent ink, the layers can end up mixing the colors on the paper, giving you more options for details. I tend to print light to dark, but this is your project, so experiment and have fun. Now that you have a beautiful set of prints, it's time to sign and addition. There are a few rules with printmaking that you can follow when signing your art, but again, do what works best for you. The standard is placing your signature in the bottom right corner of the paper or just under the bottom right corner of the print itself. On the left side, you will need to addition the print. Printmaking produces multiple copies of the exact same image, and this is the beauty of printmaking, so you can share and reproduce beautiful artwork for everyone. An addition is a set of identical prints and is numbered in the bottom left corner. I have six decent prints, so I will be numbering my first one with one out of six, second with two out of six, and so on. For prints you don't want to include in the addition, you can label with an AP or artist proof. Thanks for watching everyone. I had so much fun making this tiny little print. I am a sucker for tiny houses, so doing something small, quick, and easy, an afternoon project was perfect for me. Like I said earlier, lino cut is a very versatile medium and you can do super small things or you can do super big things. The sky's the limit and most art or craft stores have the supplies to get you started. I'd love to see the projects that you produce, so definitely feel free to stay in touch and send me anything you make. Thanks.